Welcome to the Reinventors Roundtable and this week's Roundtable on Reinventing Money and Politics. Now, no one's really seen this uh, as clearly as uh, Larry Lessig. He's putting on a table a problem he doesn't know how to solve. But essentially, it's how do we build the public pressure needed to actually force that kind of systemic change on Washington. The problem is not that money is in politics. There's no way to avoid a politics with money in it. The problem is the way that we fund campaigns and the effect that has on the politics that our government produces. It doesn't matter what the issue is. The point is we've evolved a system that gives these funders an extraordinary capacity to veto reform. This government will not address in a sensible way any of the important issues that people care about. The solution to that problem is to reduce the amount of time they're spending raising money, but most importantly, broaden out the range of Americans from whom they're raising that money. And there are many proposals out there for doing that. The question is how we create the political force to make them essential and uh, certain to be part of our future. And historically, social movements have been extremely difficult to organize. What's happened now is technology has radically reduced the costs of collective action, of organizing, and by virtue of that, you have this really distributed, very personal, incremental local campaigns that open up avenues for new types of organizing that weren't previously possible. A moment of outrage is a great way to focus attention in our very distracted society, but that doesn't in itself mean change. Imagine what happened after Newtown, right? There was essentially the entire country focused on the problem of gun violence prevention, but we haven't yet seen um, national legislation to really address the problem. We've seen interesting things on the local level, but how do you move from a movement, a moment to a movement? What does that look like? How can we help facilitate that? This notion that we have to create this movement, that it has to come from somewhere and, and really, it's already begun and it, it, it's had uh, several years, several cycles, in fact, uh, of ramping up. So the question then does become, can we create the sort of mass and the scale that can overcome the big money from, from big pharma or big energy or, or any of the big money uh, nefarious interests? I think all of us who are activists need to think harder about how to bring people who we think we disagree with into our movements and uh, reaching out, uh, you know, in, in various interesting ways to change the framing of the issues. What we're seeing is the emergence of a new kind of economy, a networked economy which is frankly fundamentally challenging because it has a much lower price point. And so you see fights like the fight that Uber had in DC or the fight that Airbnb has had in New York. And so how do we use that new economic force, um, use the connections that they have to their consumers to begin to solidify this movement and recruit these users as advocates. We have to figure out how do you build constituencies for ideas that are persistent, that are broad, that are ongoing, and that, that cause people in Congress uh, to, uh, you know, to wake up. We should have a slogan here, it's the money stupid, it's the money stupid. And if we could think about the platform as exploding the number of these very short personal narratives the tie to the issue or have a punchline related to the issue, I think that begins to seed the kind of recognition that creates the incentive for politicians to try to, 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 try to uh, capitalize on it by actually making this their issue. If the generation that's coming of age and that's going to define American politics for the next 20 years is paying more attention to Facebook than they are to CBS, then the, your, the way you communicate on Facebook actually will have a, a political impact. I think oftentimes we, we think open and we think, well, we have to let people do anything uh, to help. We should be open to anyone who wants to contribute in any way, but it's enormously useful actually to be super specific. There's a part of this is, is people need to be engaged on the leadership front is they need to start uh, using the tools they have, whether it's Twitter, Facebook, Tumblr, whatever, it doesn't matter. Use those tools to start organizing, bring people together. Over time, as this becomes more of a norm, I think it's gonna be more and more difficult for the old guard, the establishment guard, to fight these big money battles when they're being overrun by a bunch of barbarians with uh, sticks and stones. So that is a future, that's the optimist in me speaking, but I really think that's the direction we're heading. As a nation or for the world, we don't have the option of ignoring the issues that our government now ignores. Um, we export bad policy to the rest of the world by our inaction from climate change to financial reform, and we destroy the opportunities for our kids by not addressing these fundamental issues. I can't think, I think most of us here recognize of a more critical thing for us to find a way to solve, and, and I'm grateful, um, you know, this has been enormously productive in, 
in helping me think at least, and I hope many, many others that have been watching to think about how we can take the next step.